In this video, I create an application group, publish applications, and review managing access to Windows Virtual Desktop. Hello, my name is Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, I show you how to create a remote applications group, publish applications, and set access in Windows Virtual Desktop. Before that, please take a second to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get alerts when new content is published. Back to it, let's start by reviewing some of the basics of application groups. There can be two types of application groups, desktop and remote app. Remote app is for, well, publishing remote applications. A desktop app group is for a full desktop experience. There can be multiple remote app groups in a host pool and only one desktop app group in a host pool. Users can be assigned to remote app groups or a remote desktop app group in a host pool, but not both. And the last bullet point here is important. As of today, users are assigned to an app group individually. This is kind of a pain to manage and Microsoft is aware of that. A new portal experience for managing Windows Virtual Desktop was demonstrated at Ignite this year. One of the features was group-based management for Windows Virtual Desktop app groups. Until then, I created a script that will sync an AD group with a remote app group. I'll show you that later. Here's a visual for assigning users to app groups. You can see in this slide the user is assigned to the desktop application group. Here the user is assigned to multiple remote app groups. The user can't be assigned to both a desktop and remote app group. For the user to have access to both a remote app and remote desktop, that requires two host pools. Let's move on to what the demo is going to cover. I'm going to start with an existing host pool. If you want to follow along and need to set one up, see my previous video that walks through onboarding and setting up a host pool. I'm going to start by creating an app group. From there, I'm going to add a couple apps. I'm going to add a user to the app group manually, and then I'm going to sync an AD group uh, with the app group using that script I was talking about. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is log in. And I'll just add this command and run it. I have to log in with an account that has rights to this remote desktop tenant. It also cannot be a guest account. Here I am logged in. Next, I'm gonna view the existing application groups. And I'll do that with the get RDS app group command. And here it is. Notice the resource type in this application group is set to desktop. And remember, as I said before, you can only have one resource type of desktop within a host pool, but you can have multiple remote app resource types. A user can be assigned to the desktop resource type or multiple remote app resource types, but not both. You can also delete this uh, group and recreate it with a different name if you wanted to. You don't need to have this group. It's just the default one that's set up when you deploy a host pool. Next, I'm going to add a remote app group, and that uses the new RDS app group command, and that will be assigned to my host pool. Now, if I run that get RDS app group command again, I have two application groups, and you can see one is remote app for the resource type, the one we just created, and the other one is desktop. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a couple applications to that app group. So the first thing I'm going to do is run a command to get all of the start menu applications. And you can see that returns quite a bit. So let's say I just wanted to find Excel. I could filter that out through PowerShell. This command will filter it down to app groups with friendly names like Excel. There it is. So that's the application. You can see it has a friendly name, alias name, file path, icon path. But the way I'm going to add it, all I need is that alias name. I use the new RDS remote app command, targeting my host pool and app group. The app alias is Excel. I'm going to run that command again, this time targeting Word. And I just happen to know that that is Word for the app alias. Oh, I forgot to change the name. Let's go back and do that. And there it is. Let me clear this out. Next, I'm going to make sure that those applications are actually in the remote app group that I just set up. This command just gets the uh, RDS remote apps for that tenant, host, and application group. There you can see I have two of them, MS Excel and MS Word. 
Next, let's take a look at who has access to each of these two application groups I have. Let's first take a look at the desktop application group that was set up on deployment. And you can see I have a test user three assigned to that app group. Now let's do the same for the app group we just set up. And nothing, nobody's been assigned. That's all right, let's assign a couple users. The first user I'm gonna add is uh, my account. So let's see if that works. There it goes. Let's see if that user is now part of that application group. We'll get the RDS app group users for the app group name apps. There it is. So now my user is part of that group. Let's try to add that test three user to this application group. Here it is, I get an error that that specified user principal name is already assigned to a desktop application group in this host pool. As I said before, you can add a user to the desktop app or a remote app, but not both. So let's review our, the permissions we have set up now. So in apps we have, let's see here, so my Travis account, and for the desktop application group, that test user three. Let's give it a try to see if this works. First, I'm gonna log in with the Travis account. And you can see uh, both Excel and Word are available. Let's try the test three account. Okay, there it is. So now I have access to the desktop on host pool two. I'm not gonna go into any of these. I'm just showing that they are showing up and available. Also, um, you can see I'm using a, a server OS with IE that doesn't support uh, some of the features, uh, but again, this is just to show that those users have access. So now we created a new app group and we added some apps. You can create multiple. Uh, you just go through the same process of, of creating an app group and assigning applications, but you do need to add users to each app group in order for it to be available to them. Uh, that is a problem. As I said before, with uh, Windows Virtual Desktop right now, it's per user. There's no group-based management yet. Uh, but I did come up with a script that I'm going to run that will synchronize an AD group to a remote desktop pool. And this script is available on my GitHub page. I'll have a link below. You can take a look at it. If we go over to AD users and computers, if we look at desktop, the only user I have in desktop, oops, there we go, is my Travis account. But here in desktop, uh, test user three is added. And if I go back and look at this uh, HP for host pool two apps, that has three of my test users in there. But over here, the apps group has my Travis account. So we're gonna straighten that out. This script starts by taking the AD group name. This is the AD group that it's gonna sync to. In this case, it's the HP two desktop. And then the tenant name, uh, the host pool name, and the uh, application group name. So if I run that, oh, looks like I missed a step. Let's try this. Oops. Okay, let's try it again. So I got an error, uh, but that's to be expected because he was trying to add my Travis account to the desktop application group. But you can see uh, later here uh, at the bottom, it did find that test three user three was not found in the AD group, so it removed it from the desktop group. Let's take a look at the permissions that we have again, so we can see what that script did. So desktop application group has nobody in there because it did remove that user three. And the app group just has my Travis user account. So let's run that script again. This time, instead of the desktop AD group, we're going to use the host pool to apps group and sync that with the application group. And you can see that right now just has Travis. So what did it do? It found that the three test accounts that were part of the AD group and not part of the application group apps uh, it did add them. And then the last line, it said that it didn't see the Travis account in the AD group 
HP2 apps, so it removed it. So let's look at where our permissions are now. So the desktop group still has nothing, but the app group is now synchronized to the AD group. Let's go back and check that out. So apps, members, there were the three, and here are the three users. Now that the Travis account has been removed from this, I'm gonna run that script again, targeting the uh, desktop group. See, that's for the apps, there it is. So the AD group is HP2 desktop, and it's targeting the desktop application group. You go back here, the only member in there is my account. Okay, there it is. It says it didn't find it in the application group, and it's gonna add it to the app group desktop application group. Let's review those permissions again, now in Windows Virtual Desktop. So the desktop application group has my account in it, and still the application group apps has the three test users. So now that is in synchronization. So one problem you would have with this script is if you had the same user in both groups, it's gonna float between the two because it'll get deleted and then remove, added to the other and then deleted from that and added to the other. Uh, so you don't wanna do that. Uh, it is a little bit wonky. I think it's better than adding in, uh, hand typing a list of users, but uh, it still could use a little bit of help. I don't plan on developing it any further because Microsoft has a solution on its way uh, that's supposed to be out, I think, in preview sometime first quarter 2020. So that's it for the demo. Uh, we created a new remote app application group. We added a couple applications to that group. And then we set permissions a couple different ways on the remote app group and the desktop application group. That's it for the demo. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted when there's new content. Thanks for watching.